Three. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things, O oh, Lord, we cast down our Oh 
As the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, He is the only one that is deserving of our praise. Uh, even though our world seems to praise everything but Him, He is the only one deserving of our praise. I would like to say good morning to you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come uh, worship with you this morning and uh, to be able to uh, share the bread of life with you this morning. Um, Nothing special about me. My name's Jamie McMillan. I'm from Bainbridge, Georgia. I'm a sinner saved by grace that God has deemed for some reason for me to serve Him the way I do. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about myself. We're going to lift up our Savior this morning. Uh, we're going to get started. I don't want anybody's um, pot roast to burn in the crock pot. I actually had a friend... Uh, an older friend that had come to, to uh, hear me preach at, at a church, and he said that. He said, don't you get all long-winded up there, boy. I got a, he said, I got a, a, a pot roast in a crock pot. It's going to burn. You cut that thing off when it's time to go now. And I said, well, you know, I'll just preach till God tells me to stop. He said, oh, it'll burn. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, uh, if you have your Bibles, and, and, I, and I pray that you do, I'd like to ask you to turn to uh, Joshua chapter 5. Um, I will say this, all preachers have different styles. Uh, I move around a little bit. I've uh, been accused of getting a little loud. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, it took a lot of passion for my Savior to go to the cross. And when I serve Him, uh, when He gives me an opportunity, I feel that I should be passionate as well. But we'll be in Joshua chapter 5. We'll be looking at verses 13 through 15 today. Uh, the title of this morning's message is, Who is Your Commander-in-Chief? Who is Your Commander-in-Chief? If you will, bow with me for prayer. Father, we love You, God, this morning. Lord, we just lift You up. We want to make most of You today, Lord. Lord, thank You for this group that came out on a holiday weekend, Lord, Independence Day, Lord. Thank You for the independence, the freedom from sin, Lord, that You give us, God. Lord, I just ask You to uh, open our ears. Lord, give us ears to hear, hearts to respond to your word, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just, uh, you'd move me out of the way. Lord, that you would uh, clean me up. Lord, make me a usable vessel that I don't hinder your word. Lord, I just, uh, I pray that you'd do things in this room, Lord, that only you can do. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd pour your Holy Spirit out upon us. Lord, that you would convict us of sin. Lord, that if there be anybody lost in this service this morning, Lord, that, uh, you touch their heart, Lord, that they would see the need for you, Lord, that they would come and offer that forgiveness that only you offer, Lord. Lord, I confess the words in John the Baptist, Lord, that I must decrease. Lord Jesus, you must increase. Lord, we'll praise you for what you're going to do in this service. In Christ's name I pray, Lord. Amen. Yesterday we, uh, we observed Independence Day, the day that we celebrate as national independence, our freedom as a country. A patriotic, a patriotic holiday, but today there are a lot that are not feeling very patriotic. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people in our country that are not acting very patriotic as well. I'm sure most of you saw back in April where they, uh, they over in Valdosta State University, they were walking on the flag. Well, last week there was protests and rallies and they were actually burning the flag. Uh, you know, I thought about the men and women who have over the years given their lives fighting for the freedom that that flag represents. Has anybody here served in the military? God bless you. Praise you for what you've done, your sacrifice, your service. There's been a lot of veterans, a lot of people that have stood up, spoke against this, and, and actually have been persecuted for it. They've suffered for their actions. We saw last week, same-sex marriage voted in as a law of the land. You know, some call this a milestone in equal rights. According to my Bible, it could be the final nail in the coffin of this country. You know, I thought about the godly men who founded this country. Founded this country on Christian values. Thankful, respectful, morally correct, 
godly values that this country was founded on. And our country seems to be further away from that than they've ever been. Now, this makes no sense to a lot of us. We know where we stand. But these that desecrate the flag, these that stand up for things that go against God's word, we just don't understand. We don't know where they stand. It's not clear where they stand. The things that go on in this world today are ridiculous. They're appalling. Uh, nasty. Where, where, where do we go wrong? What's the problem? Where, where did we go wrong? The problem is who, we follow, who people are following. The problem is the lack of proper leadership. Many people today are swayed from side to side, here and there, because they don't know who they're following. And they don't know who to follow. Um, the flag, the Christian flag in the church is not flying as high as it used to. Poor leadership. And that doesn't always fall back on the church. That poor leadership most times in the home. The limited number of young people in churches today is not lack of programs, not lack of opportunity, lack of godly leadership in the home. It seems that the leaders of most households think there's all secular activities are more important than being in God's house. So who are we following? Who, who's leading us? You know, there's one that gave his life for our freedom. Our freedom from sin. And that's who we want to lift up this morning. His name is Jesus. He is the commander in chief of the Lord's army. And he has all the answers. All the problems in our homes, our churches, and in this world. Now, I know when you heard commander in chief, you thought I was going to preach about your beloved president. But I'm not. If you are recording this, I'd love for him to get a copy of it though. In this morning's message, we're going to look at Joshua. Now, Joshua definitely knew who was in charge. Moses has died. God has called Joshua to lead his children into the promised land. In this passage, I want us to do a self-evaluation. I want us to evaluate who we're following. And I also want it to be an encouragement to us in these last days that we're living. You know, everybody's being led by someone or something. It's very important we know who we're following because guess what? We're being followed. We have children. We have grandchildren. We have people. We have lost people in our jobs. Everywhere we go, they're looking at us and they're following. Stand for the reading of God's Word. Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. And it came to pass when Joshua was by, was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite of him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or are you for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the arm, Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Father, we ask, Lord, that you just bless this time as we dig into your word, Lord. Holy Spirit, convict hearts. Lord, bring us to the place you need us to be of humility, Lord, that we yield to you, Lord, and we'll praise you. Amen. You can be seated. Now, as you know the story, I'm going to have to pick things up. Uh, the children of Israel wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years due to their disobedience. And here's Joshua going to lead them into the promised land. The land flowing with milk and honey. Now, God has just miraculously divided the flooded waters of the Jordan. And they have walked across. And here stands Joshua. He's looking over Jer Jericho. The Bible tells us that Jericho was securely shut up. No one came in, no one went out. A city surrounded by a solid wall. But as Joshua looked over that city, that fortress, that impossible looking feat between, that stood between them and God's best for their lives, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite of him with his sword drawn. Now all of a sudden this man appears. This is no ordinary man. This is a man of great stature, a warrior, ready for battle. Then the appearance of this man intimidated Joshua. We know this because the Bible says, and Joshua went to him and asked him one question. Are you for us? Or are you for our adversaries? Now, Josh, why did Joshua ask him that? Because Joshua knew this was more than a man. Joshua looked at this great man and he said, wow. 
If he's for us, the war is already won. But if he's for our adversaries, we just will go drown in the Jordan. We're beat down. We're done. The Bible says, he answered Joshua, and he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. That brings me to my first point. We see that Joshua realized who the commander in chief really is. The Bible says Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? The Bible says a man stood opposite of him. This was the man. The man that stood opposite of him was the God man. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of many pre-incarnate appearances of Jesus in the Old Testament. Joshua immediately recognized him as Lord. Do you see how in one verse God got Joshua's eyes off of the impossible feet in front of him and put them on the Lord. You know, we're just like Joshua and the children of Israel a lot of times. We look at how bad things are. This is not good. Oh my Lord, this is this and this. We look at the boundaries. We let the barriers keep us from God's best in our life. When all we got to do is get our, li- our eyes off the boundaries and get them on Him. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I take this opportunity to say, because we're in discouraging times in the church, can I take this opportunity to say God's not done with His church? He's not. God's not done with any of us. He has a plan for each of you in His church. He has a plan for us in His kingdom work. You know how I know that? We're still here. If He was done with us, we'd be gone. We would be in eternity. With him. He's left us here because he's not done with us. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's not done. He's not done. When we recognize him as Lord, the commander, he's for us. The Bible says if he's for us, then who can be against us? Not everyone that knows him knows him as Lord, though. It's not head knowledge, it's heart surrender. It's not head knowledge. It's heart surrender. You will never, ever experience God's best for your life until you surrender your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You say, well, you know, and Jamie, I I said a prayer one time, and I was baptized. I'm okay. Let me ask you a question. Who's making the decisions? Who's making the decisions? If you're making the decisions, Jesus is not making decisions. Jesus is not making the decisions. Jesus is not your Lord. If He's not your Lord, He's not your Savior. Who's making the decisions? There's a many a soul in hell that would love to be able to come back and go back through those baptismal waters surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Meaning, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of like the bumper sticker, God's my co-pilot, you better switch seats. Now, I want to pick out three characteristics. We know, who the, we know who we should be following, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pick out three characteristics of those who recognize Jesus as Lord. The first one, those who know Jesus as Lord worship Him. In verse 14, it says that Joshua fell on his face and worship. Now, we don't worship angels. We worship God. Do you know that God... We had a great worship service a while ago. Do you know God inhabits the praise of His people? The demons flee when we worship God. They can't stand it. It is glorifying to God when we come together as we have this morning as believers and worship Him. Listen... Listen to me. Joshua fell down. Fell down in worship. Why did he do that? Because he realized what God had done. And he realized what God was fixing to do. What he was about to do. You know, faith is believing in what's not been seen. You know, it's worship to God when we believe in faith what he's going to do. God, I know this world's a mess, but I know you can clean it up. I know you're going to clean it up. God, I know your plan is going to be great. I want to follow you. God, my home's a wreck. God, this country's in a mess, but I know you have a plan. I know you're in control. Make me a part of it. 
let me say this. In worship, and I think everybody worshiped this morning, but you can't come into a worship service week after week and not, and if you come into a worship service week after week and you don't desire to worship God, something's wrong. There's a heart problem. You know, people today, they well, get ready, kids. It's time to go to church. Come on. We're going to be late. You know, the preacher's going to look at us funny if we're late. Let me tell you something. If you're saved, you realize what God has done. He has saved your rotten soul. If you believe what He's going to do, like take you to heaven when you die, you should want to come praise and worship Him. For all he's done and all he's going to do. And this is going to sound ugly, but I'm not being ugly. If you don't have a song in your heart for Jesus, then do you have Jesus in your heart? Do you have Jesus in your heart? You know, we can't walk around like Brother Sucker Pickle or Sister Sourpuss every day and claim that we have the spirit of living God living in us. We can't, people. We ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth if we've saved this morning. Amen? Hey, they are awake. You want to talk about Independence Day? Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Commander-in-Chief, the Lord, came and died for our freedom from the bondage of sin. He came to shed His blood so that we could have forgiveness. So instead of going to hell like we would deserve, we can live in heaven. We can live in a mansion. We can walk in streets of gold. We can have a new body and never feel pain, never feel sorrow again. And live like that forever. He paid a debt. He didn't know. Because we owe a debt we can't pay. If that doesn't make you want to fall, prostrate yourself on the earth in front of Him, do you know Him? Have you experienced His gift of salvation? Our next characteristic. Those who recognize Jesus as Lord seek His will. In the last part of verse 14, Joshua asked, What does my Lord say to His servant? Joshua has saw the promised land 40 years before. He went in there. And he ended up wandering around in the wilderness until now. He tasted those giant grapes 40 years earlier. He again was at that edge. Now we would have thought that Joshua would have said, Lord, please, give us this victory. Give us this land. Lord, you promised it to us. Please, Lord, we deserve it. 40 years in the wilderness, we deserve it, Lord. I've been faithful, Lord. This is Joshua. I've been faithful. God, please take us in. Not Joshua. Joshua said, what does my Lord say to his servant? How many times do we put what we want and what we think we deserve ahead of what God's got planned and he knows for the best of our lives? How many times? He sought the will of the Lord, not his own will. He wanted the Lord to direct His path, even if it meant turning back. Even if it meant turning away from what He'd been dreaming for for 40 years. That's surrender. Let me tell you something. If you want what's best for this church, you want what's best for your life, it can't be about you. It's got to be all about Him and what He wants and His will. You know, one way we seek His will is in His Word. Now, I know we all have different callings. But let me tell you something. Since God saved my rotten soul, there's one thing I can't get enough of. And that's this right here. It's alive. He speaks to me through it. He draws me closer to Him through it. I don't understand when people say they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they have no desire to learn anything about this book. They don't desire to come anywhere closer to Him. That doesn't add up. You know, one Sunday morning, and I'm a, I'm a new preacher, you can probably tell, um, licensed in the ministry this year. A few months ago I was <laughs> getting ready, I think I was going to preach at West Bainbridge Baptist. 
the night before, boy, the devil, he put in my mind I had the wrong message. Your message is all wrong. I knew that wasn't true. God gave me the message, and God's never wrong. But he just kept on eating at me all Saturday night. I didn't sleep. Sunday morning, I was lacing up those shoes, and God spoke to me. And he said, son, you're going into a battle. Every time you suit up and walk out that door, you're going to battle. He said, your adversary is relentless. He said, but I'm with you, and you have the power of my word. Christians, we're in a war. We're in spiritual warfare. We fight a battle every day, but we don't fight it alone. And I'm going to tell you, we don't win the battles of life with carnal weapons either. We win the battles of life by seeking the will of the God and His Word. The Lord came to Joshua with His sword drawn in His hand. People, we carry the sword of the Lord with us everywhere we go. I'm going to tell you something else. The Bible said it says that in this Word that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's time we stand on this word, people. You look at our world. Look at what's going on. What have we gotten accomplished sitting on our blessed assurance with our dusty Bible sitting on our counter, on our ta- uh, coffee tables? What have we got? Where's it gotten us? It's time to stand on it. It's time to live by it. It's time to do business by it. It's time to do politics by it. Some of you men want to step up and be politicians? Do it by the word. Our third and last uh, characteristic. Those who recognize Jesus as Lord, follow his commands. Verse 15 says, Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for this place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The main point in that verse right there is Joshua did so. Those of you that's been in the military, when you received an order, when you were in the military, you received an order from a uh, superior officer, what'd you do? It's okay, you can talk in church. You obeyed. You did what he said. If he said give you a hundred push-ups, you didn't say, mm, I'd get back with you on that. I got something else I'd rather go do. I'll get back with you on that. No, you obeyed. You were under authority. We're under authority. We should be. When the commander says, give, you give. When he says, tithe, you tithe. When he says, come listen, you come listen. He goes, go tell, go tell. And I will. I wouldn't plan on saying this, but I commend you. Mission program's awesome. We got 42 churches in our association, and most of them, I'm sorry, they don't know what a mission is. I commend you for that. Doing God's work. That's what we're supposed to be doing. He says, go where to go. I want you to think about something. And I'm fixing to wind her up. I want you to think about something. Think about, you all know the story. Think about the fact that Joshua and Caleb, God allowed them to live to enter the promised land. Why did he do that? Remember, they were the only two. Only two that believed that God would give them that land. They were the only two that wanted to go in and possess that land 40 years earlier. They were the only two that believed God would deliver them into that land. And the Lord fulfilled His promise to them two men because of their obedience. Church, we need to remember something. It's very important that we remember God blesses obedience. The Bible teaches that obedience to the Lord is connected to proof of our salvation. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. 1 John 2, verses 3 and 4 says, Now that by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. The fact of whether someone knows Jesus as their Lord is evident in their obedience. You know, you think about something. Think about Joshua. What he had to go and make these knuckle-headed children of God believe. He had to give them this battle plan. He said, all right, here's the battle plan. 
We don't have any tanks. No Tomahawk missiles. No airstrike. No army. No marines. No navy. We don't even have a battering ram. I want y'all to march. We're going to march. Seven days we're going to march. Six days, don't say a word. Just march around one time, go back to camp. Seventh day, we're going to march around. The seventh time, the seven priests are going to blow the seven trumpets, and I want you to shout. And the Lord's going to give you this city. Man. You know the warriors in that group, the men of war, they were like, I think we're going to need a little more than that. But the Bible says they didn't doubt him. I didn't even make that one. (laughs) Glad y'all having fun at church, though. They didn't doubt him. The Bible says nothing. They followed him. They followed his leadership. They didn't, none of them say, man, this boy has flipped his lid. They bought it. Hook, line, sinker. They bought it. Why? I believe they saw it. They saw it in his eyes. I believe it was written all over his face. I believe he had sunburn. S-O-N. Burn. This man had a first-hand encounter with the Lord and they could see it. They believed in him. You can tell when somebody got that overflowing with the Spirit of God. You know that look. This man had to be led before he could lead. Before he could be an authority figure, he had to be under the authority figure. He'd have never gotten those people to follow him if they hadn't known he was following the Lord's direction. Men, you want your wives and families to follow you? They got to see you following the lead of the Holy Spirit. I give you a personal testimony. I tell you, they'll follow you when it don't make no sense. They'll follow you when you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. They'll follow you when they can't see the other side. As long as they know that you following the lead of the Holy Spirit. As long as they know who you're following who you're following. They'll follow. Remember, church, we have some guidelines. We have to realize who the commander-in-chief is. He's Jesus. Remember this. At home, at work, at church, on voting day. On voting day, people, it's coming. It's got to be about Him. It's not about us. It's got to be all about Him. Somebody who truly recognizes Jesus as their commander-in-chief, worships Him as Lord, seeks His will, and obeys His command. Can I tell you something? As bad as things may seem in our world, as bad as things may seem in your house right now, you know, we don't have nothing to worry about. You're like, huh? We don't. Why do you say that? Same reason Joshua didn't have anything to worry about. The battle's been won. Jesus Christ has won the battle. The enemy is defeated. All we got to do is stand up and march, man. Follow. He says march around six times. Do it. We just got to follow him. I'm fitting to bring it in for a landing, I promise. Do you realize that... um? The commander and the chief, he's coming back. You realize he's returning? He will return. And I'm afraid if this world don't turn back to him, (laughs) it's going to be soon. We have to ask ourselves this question. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are you ready? Brother Rick Corum, I heard him tell a story a few months back about his daughter. Come into faith in Christ. You don't know Brother Rick. He's a, an evangelist. He's been a preacher since he was 16 years old. His daddy was a preacher. His son was just ordained in Jacksonville as a preacher last fall. They got a little bit of the gospel in their blood, okay? Just a little bit. His daughter, one of his daughters, lives in Augusta, Georgia. And you would know it. She's married to a youth minister. Well, about a year and a half ago, there was a quake, a small earthquake over in South Carolina. And the tremors were bad enough at their house that things were falling off the walls. And they walked outside, and the lamp light poles were moving. And, I mean, they were scared. And they looked at each other, and they said, Is the Lord returning? Is He coming? 
Brother Rick and his wife live in, um, they live in Florida, Jacksonville. They were going to the airport to fly to Alaska. And they called to check on all the kids before they got on the plane. They had no idea. And they told them about it. And they, made, they had the plane to board. And, and uh, they made sure everything was okay. And they got on the plane. And they flew to Alaska. And they got settled in at the room. And she called her preacher daddy. And he was so relieved to comfort her. And she said, Daddy, I got saved. He said, Baby, I know you saved. N- no, Daddy. I-, I got saved yesterday morning. He, he said, but honey, I-, I watched you walk out. I led you in a prayer. He said, I baptized you. She said, I know, Daddy. She said, but I've been playing church my whole life. And she said, it took me realizing that he would that he could be coming for me to realize that I knew him, but I didn't know him as my Lord. She said, I'd never surrendered my life to him. This woman had never went a day in her life where she wasn't in church. She never went a day in her life she wasn't in the presence of a pastor. And she was lost. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Father, we ask, Lord, that you just move your spirit among this congregation, Lord, that you would convict hearts, Lord, that we would respond. I wonder this morning if there's anybody here that could say, I play church. I've, I've never surrendered my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I've never made that step. If that's you today, the Word says we're two or more gathered in His name. Jesus is in our presence. Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. He is here. Put aside your pride and bow before Him today and accept His grace, His saving grace. This morning you may be saved and you've gotten away from the Lord. You've gotten off track. You're not following His lead. You're not following Him. You're following your own lead. You need to come this morning in repentance. You need to turn back to the leadership of the Lord, the Commander-in-Chief. You may want to come and and pray for God's will to be done in your life and pray for God's will to be done in this church. You may want to just come to this altar this morning and pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. Pray that they'll return to the Lord so He can heal our land. However the Lord's dealing with your heart this morning, I just ask that you would stand and that you would respond to Him.